Bell was an ugly, lonely, and weak F-rank adventurer that everyone bullied and no one wanted. But upon finding his own goddess, he was able to awaken his strongest SS-rank skill. Bell working as a weak and lonely adventurer attempting to make money by slaying monsters in the underground dungeon. We meet Bell as he is being chased by a minotaur. But when he got to a dead end, he was about to be destroyed like a tiny weakling. He was suddenly saved by a scantily clad and beautiful girl who slices the minotaur into two, giving him a taste of its blood. The lady, who happens to be Eyes, the sword princess, asks Bell if he is alright. But he is unable to answer her because he is struck by her beauty. Oh my god! Wow! While covered in blood, Bell runs to the Adventurer's Guild, and as everyone wonders what is wrong with him, he immediately calls out on Ina, who is an attendant in the guild to tell him about Eyes. There, he explains to Ina about his encounter on the fifth floor of the dungeon which makes her begin to scold him as she tells him how dangerous the dungeon itself is. After listening to Ina, Bell asks her to tell him about Az. Looking at him, Ina asks if he has developed some feelings towards Az, and Bell accepts that he has a strong feeling towards Az. Wait a minute! Realizing this, Ina explains to Bell that Az belongs to the Loki Familia, who is also in level 5, and she was named the Sword Mistress by the gods. Still curious about Az, Bella asks Ina if Az has any male partner, but she tells him she is not sure. Also because he belongs to the Hestia Familia and got his blessings from the goddess Hestia, it would not be easy for him to look into Az, or at least be her partner. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. Bell becomes disappointed and goes to submit his gems to get money, but before he leaves, Ina advises him that ladies like Az can only get attracted to stronger men, and if he works hard, he might gain her favor someday. Because of this, Bell becomes motivated and excited, which makes him tell Ina he loves her, shocking her as she immediately wonders why she spoils him so much. On his way home, Bell remembers what his grandfather had told him about getting girls in the dungeon as an adventurer. At this moment, Bell decides that he would make sure he works hard enough to be able to get the girl of his dreams. On getting home, Bell tells his goddess, Hestia, how he almost died in the dungeon. Hearing this, Hestia gets scared, as she starts to check his body to see if he is hurt. Seeing how much she cares, Bell assures her that he would not abandon her, because he is the only member of her familia. Then he notices that she has made dinner and proceeds to ask her how she got food. Hestia tells him she got the food from the booth where she works part-time, then she also suggests that they have a party while eating dinner. As they both eat, Hestia tells Bell how she is not able to find anyone to join her familia and begins to feel bad. Seeing her sad, Bell assures her they would be okay, since she is trying her best to fend for them. Did you pray today? Also, Hestia feels bad because she is unable to use her divine powers, but Bell assures her they would be fine, which makes Hestia excited as she tells him how happy she is to meet him. Later that night, Hestia checks Bell's stats, telling him how she feels about A's, and when she begins to sound angry, Bell asks why she is getting worked up, but she denies it. Yep. However, while checking Bell's stats, Hestia notices something, and when she shows Bell his stats, he becomes disappointed after realizing he has no skills and he is unable to use magic yet. Disappointed, Bell leaves the room, and Hestia begins to wonder how children in the lesser sphere change easily. Then Hestia reveals what she had scraped off in a paper, and tells herself that Bell possesses the realist phrase skill where he would be able to grow and mature easily. She also adds that he is able to unlock the skill because of Az and that alone is getting her angry. The following morning, Bell wakes up and sees Hestia sleeping on his chest, which makes him become scared as he immediately hurries out. On his way to the dungeon, Bell meets a beautiful girl who gives him a gem, telling him that he had dropped it. Confused, Bell collects the gem and the girl asks if he is going to the dungeon that early, but before he could reply to her, his stomach begins to make some angry noises. Seeing this, the girl immediately gives him a box of food containing her breakfast, but Bell tries to refuse it. Then she shows him the restaurant where she works and tells him he could also eat there when they open. The girl tells him to promise her he would stop by to eat in their restaurant that evening in exchange for the food she gave him. Bell agrees and makes his way to the dungeon, where he begins to lament how he would keep up with Az so as to be worthy to have her. Suddenly, he sees monsters coming his way and decides to kill them all for Az's sake. Later that night, Hestia shows Bell his results, which makes him so excited to see how much he has grown. But Hestia seems angry as she hisses at him, 
telling him to go have dinner alone while she goes to a party at her part-time job. Seeing her act this way, Belle becomes confused, but unknown to him, Hestia goes to a path to sit by herself, as she wonders how much Belle likes A's for him to grow that much of his skill. Also, she limits on why he would feel like that towards A's when he has her. Wait a minute! Meanwhile, Belle goes to the restaurant where the girl he met earlier that day works, and upon seeing him the girl becomes excited, and then introduces herself as Sir Flover. There Belle sits, and he is given different type of foods to eat. At that moment, the owner of the restaurant named Mamma Mia meets him and tells him how cute he is for an adventurer. Surprised, Belle begins to calculate the amount of food given to him and realizes how much he would spend without asking for the food he is given. However, another attendant announces the arrival of their guests who made a reservation. But when the guests enter the restaurant, Belle immediately recognizes them as the members of the Loki Familia, but gets astounded when he sees Az. There, Sar tells him that the Loku Familia are the regular customers, which makes Belle decide to keep coming to the restaurant as a way to always see Az. After a while, one of the members of the Loki familia named Beat tells Aes to tell the story of how she saved a boy who was so scared of a minotaur. At this point, Bell knew he was the one they were talking about, then he became angry and pain that Aes had told the rest of her familia about how scared he was. However, Aes decides to keep mute but Bait continues to tell the story while the listeners laugh, until another member of the familia cautions him and tells him to stop. Beat ignores her and turns to Az to ask her who she would pick between himself and the boy she met in the dungeon, since the boy cannot stand next to her, because he is a loser. Hearing this, Bell gets angry and immediately runs out of the restaurant, while the people there think he ran because he does not have any money to pay. But Az also runs outside at that moment, as she begins to wonder if Bell is the same boy she met in the dungeon. Meanwhile, Bell goes to the dungeon to kill more monsters telling himself he would do what he must to get stronger. The following morning, Hestia begins to get worried as she did not see Belle, until suddenly she sees him coming towards her, and when he gets to where she is, he breaks down in tears, telling her of his desire to get stronger. To start with, Hestia checks Belle's stats and tells him how much he has grown from the last time she checked it, which makes him become very excited as he knows he is getting strong. Then they both assure themselves that they would help each other grow. After their discussion, Hestia informs Belle that she would not be able to come home for two to three days because she wants to attend a party meant for gods and goddesses, which he agrees to. Later, Belle goes to the restaurant where Sir works and apologizes to Mamma Mia for not paying up the previous day. After apologizing, Sir asks him if he is going to the dungeon, which he tells her he is. Then she offers him another box of food for his trip to the dungeon and he thanks her for her kindness. But before he leaves, Mama Mia advises him to be careful in the dungeon because his life and safety is supposed to be his top priority. Hearing this, Bell thanks her for the advice and he leaves. Meanwhile, at the god's party, Hestia is caught by the goddess of beauty Freya, while stuffing her face with food, but while they exchange pleasantries, they get interrupted by Loki. Because of this, Hestia gets angry and asks Loki what she is looking for in the party which makes Loki tell her she does not need any permission to attend the party. Also, Hestia asks Loki about Az, so as to know if she has any man she is seeing, but Loki immediately tells her not to ask her about Az, because she is her own favorite, and she would kill anyone who tries to trouble her. During this conversation, Freya integrates as she asks Loki why she has worn a lovely dress. Then, Loki tells her she dresses nice, because she does not want to be seen as a poor god. Belle, on the other hand, tries to follow the other adventurers to the dungeon. But on her way, he admires the different weapons some of the adventurers possess, but gets distracted when he hears an adventurer talking about a tournament called the Monsterphilia. Meanwhile, at the party, Hestia and Loki begin a brawl, as Loki pinches Hestia's cheeks. But in the end, Loki goes home crying after being insulted by Hestia. There, Hestia hears another god's voice, and immediately recognizes the person as Hephaestus. Then she suddenly begins to jump for joy as she tells Freya and Hephaestus that she came to the party to see Hephaestus. Hearing this, Hephaestus immediately tells her that she would not lend her more money, but Hestia pleads that she has changed, as she is only looking for how she would help her familia. At that moment, Freya tells Hephaestus and Hestia that she wants to go and sort something since she only came to the party to confirm something. 
Then she also adds that she is tired of tasting all the men in the party and wants to try out new stuffs, then she leaves. There, Hephaestus asks Hestia what she wants from her, and Hestia tells her she wants her to forge a weapon for Bell, which, unknown to her, Bell is already checking out some weapons, and at that moment, Bell meets another god named Maich. There, Bell asks Maich why he did not attend the party of the gods, and he replies that he is busy preparing some things for his own familia. However, Maich gives Bell some magic potions, which he refuses at first but later accepts and thanks Maich for his kindness. Meanwhile, at the party, Hestia bows down to Hephaestus that he should help her to forge the weapon for Bell, because she wants to help Bell as he is trying to be better. After much persuasion, Hephaestus agrees to make the weapon, and tells Hestia that she would be her personal assistant. She as well adds that they have both agreed that Hestia would pay her for the weapon later. Hearing this, Hestia becomes happy, but she gets more excited when Hephaestus tells her she would forge the weapon herself, which makes Hestia begin to hail her as the god of smith. The following day, Bell begins to wonder if Hestia would return that day until he suddenly hears someone calling out to him. And when he looks back, he sees an attendant of the restaurant he met Sir. There, the attendant named Anya tells him that she wants him to help them give a purse to Sar, who skipped her work to go to the monster philia. Bell agrees to take the purse to her, but asks Anya what the monster philia event is all about. Anya explains that the event is a huge yearly event, held by the Genesha Familia, where a lot of adventurers show off their powers by defeating some monsters they captured from the dungeon in a huge arena filled with spectators. However, Hephaestus eventually finished forging a knight for Bell, which makes Hestia become excited and asks Hephaestus if she can take it to Bell immediately. But Hephaestus tells her not to forget the money she owes her. In Loki's house, she is visited by a god, whom she asks what she has come to do at her place. Then the god tells Loki of how she is interested in Bell and how beautiful and attractive he is. Oh my god! Wow! Hearing this, Loki begins to insult the god for eyeing young men to fulfill her desires. On getting to the tournament, Bell sees how crowded the place is and tries to go and find Sar. All of a sudden, he hears his name and becomes shocked, only for him to see Hestia there. He asks her how she came back suddenly, and she tells him how she wants them to go on a date for them to spend time together. Wait a minute! Hestia drags Bell as they go to get some street food and feed each other while sitting under a tree. But unknown to them, the god that is after Bell goes to where the monsters are kept and teases them, while telling herself that she wants him to grow stronger. While on their date, Bell and Hestia suddenly hear a loud noise as everyone is running for their lives. Seeing the huge monster running, Bell and Hestia realize that the monster is after them, and they both begin to also run for their lives. Suddenly, Bell sees that the monster is about to attack Hestia and tries to attack it, but his sword breaks into pieces in the process. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. Then, he decides to hide Hestia, telling her he would distract the monster for her to escape, because he does not want to lose any of his family again. Bell tells Hestia this, because he remembers how he lost his grandfather and has decided not to lose Hestia, as well since she is his only family. At the arena, Venetia is told that some monsters have escaped, but when he asks about the guards that are kept there, he is informed that the guards have been charmed. Then he instructs his men to seek help from other gods and familias so as to recover the missing monsters and also find whoever was behind it. While Bell continues to fight the huge monster, Hestia is able to escape but falls down while holding the knife she wanted to present to Bell. And at that moment, she remembers what Hephaestus had told her about it. Meanwhile, Ina gets the information about the missing monsters and immediately tells the girl who told her about the news not to make noise about it so as to prevent the people present from panicking. But suddenly, Egg sees the two girls talking and asks what they are talking about, which makes them end up telling her the news. On the other hand, Bell decides to fight with the monster so that he create time for Hestia to run so far. And while almost being killed by the monster, Bell wonders if he could see Isa's face again, but he immediately tells himself that he would not want her to see him in such a state. Meanwhile, Ace has also begun to hunt and kill the monsters that escaped, and after defeating them one after the other, she asks Divina who wonders if Bell is also safe about how many monsters are left. While fighting, Bell suddenly hears Hestia's voice and becomes shocked as he had told her to escape. Unfortunately, at that moment, the monster shifts its gaze from Bell to Hestia, which makes Bells immediately run to carry Hestia away, as the monster tries to attack them. While they hide, Bell tells Hestia that they are both going to die. But as Hestia tries to give him the knife, 
Belle immediately carries her again on seeing that the monster is after them. Finally, they get to an enclosed place and Hestia gifts Belle the knife and calls it the Hestia knife. Seeing this, Belle begins to cry and Hestia assures him that he can beat the monster as she would be by his side. Then, while Hestia tries to connect the knife to Belle and activates the power of the knife, she becomes shocked at how powerful the knife is. Suddenly, the monster perceives them and sees where they are hiding, which makes Hestia tell Belle that he should go and defeat the monster because she believes in him. Belle goes ahead and immediately begins to fight with the monster as he remembers how Hestia has been supporting him, being the only family he has. After a while, Belle defeats the monster and Hestia becomes very excited, while Aes watches from a corner and sees the way Hestia is hugging Belle, who is very excited to defeat such a huge monster. Yep. All of a sudden, Hestia falls unconscious and Belle becomes scared. But the goddess who is after Belle watches from afar, and it turns out to be the goddess of beauty, Freya, who tells herself that she would see and play with Belle again. Worriedly, Belle takes Hestia to Mamma Mia's restaurant, and with Sir's help, they are able to get a bed as well. While Hestia sleeps, Belle thanks Sir for the help, while she tells him how she is attracted to him then leaves. Later, when Hestia wakes up, Belle asks her where she got the knife from as he can see an inscription of Hephaestus's name. Then Hestia confirms that she got it from Hephaestus, the god of smiths. Hestia adds that she knows he has been window shopping for the knife at Angela's weapon shop and wants to help him. On hearing this, Belle bursts into tears and hugs Hestia. Belle goes to the guild to tell Ina that he explored the seventh floor of the dungeon. As his dungeon advisor, she becomes angry and begins to scold him asking him why he had gone to the seventh floor because of how dangerous it is for him. At that moment, Belle tells her that he has grown since the last time he went to the dungeon, but she does not believe him, as he also adds that some of his stats are ranked E to be sure. Ina takes Belle to a place in the guild and inspects his back to check his stats, only to find out he is not lying to her. Seeing this, she becomes happy for him and asks if he would be free the following day, which he tells her he would and she tells him they should meet at a spot in town. The following day, Belle waits for Ina at the spot she had told him, and when arrives, she apologizes for coming late and asks Belle what he thinks about her dressing. At first, he is confused and immediately tells her that she is looking youthful, but suddenly, Ina grabs his head to tell her that she is young, as she tells him to apologize for calling her old. After, Belle asks Ina where they are going, and she tells him they are going to the Hephaestus shop in the Babel Tower. Then, Belle immediately becomes shocked as he tells her that he does not have enough money to buy something at the Hephaestus shop. Hearing this, Ina laughs at Belle and tells him to stop acting like a kid so that they can go. Getting to a floor of the tower, Belle sees that it is the Hephaestus shop and he becomes shocked at the prices of the weapons there. But Ina tells him that their destination is the floor above them. As Belle continues to admire the weapons, Hestia comes out to welcome them thinking they were other customers. Belle sees Hestia and asks her what she is doing in the store, but she ignores his question and asks Ina who she is. Ina introduces herself to Hestia and tells her how pleased she is. Also, Hestia ignores Ina's gratings and whispers to her that she must not abuse Bells as his advisor, but Ina tells her that she keeps her personal life away from her business life. Then Hestia continues to glare at Ina till they both leave the shop. Soon, they get to their destination and Ina tells Belle that the floor is another extension of the Hephaestus brand, because the weapons made on the floor were made by beginners in the Familia, and they all sell their weapons cheap so as to put their own name outside as well. Belle goes to a part of the store and sees an armor that he likes, but when he checks the amount, he realizes that the amount of the Amor is basically all of the money he has left. Eventually, Belle buys the armor. Then, Ina tells him to try to join a party or hire a supporter and Belle tells her he would think about her suggestion. After leaving the shop, Ina gives Belle a protector and tells him to be careful any time he goes to the dungeon, as adventurers tend to die quickly. She also adds that he should not die on her. Wait a minute! Belle accepts the gift and thanks her as he makes his way back home. On his way home, Belle gets hit by a little girl who is running away from an adventurer, and as the adventurer tries to hurt the girl, Belle immediately uses his knife to stop him. Suddenly, the adventurer tries to attack Belle, but he is stopped by an attendant from Mamma Mia's restaurant named Ryu, and the adventurer runs away. Grateful, Belle thanks Ryu for her help, but as she leaves, she tells him to be careful as Sar would not be happy if anything happens to him. 
Then, Bell begins to look for the little girl he saved, but the girl seems to have gotten away. The following day, Bell goes to the dungeon, but he suddenly sees the little girl he had saved the previous day, who asks him if he needs a supporter, and then introduces herself as Liluruka. She urges Bell to hire her, because of the way he touched her ears, which is her precious spot. Eventually, Bell hires Lily, and they both go into the dungeon where Bell fights a lot of creatures. And when he finishes, he tells Lily he is only able to focus because of her. There, Lily sees Bell's knife and asks him where he got it from. Just then, Bell reveals to her that he got it from his goddess, and proceeds to ask her of her familia, to which she replies that she belongs to the Soma Familia. Then, Lily begins to pick the gems from the creatures, and offers Bell another knife to cut the last creature while she stares at his knife. However, Bell goes to the guild, where he tells Ina about his new supporter from the Soma Familia, which makes her become uneasy as she tells him that the people from the Soma Familia are always desperate as if they are scared for their lives. But then, when she asks Bell about his impression of Lily, he tells her that Lily is nice and he was able to make more money because of her help. Later, Bell bids Ina goodbye, but as he is about to leave, Ina asks him where his knife is and when he checks, he realizes that his knife is gone. And it was at this moment he realizes that he f***ed up. Meanwhile, Lily takes Bell's knife to a gnome who prizes it at the rate of 30 Valius. But Lily tells him that she cannot sell it at that rate, and leaves the shop as she begins to think of how the gnome wanted to dupe her. On her way, Lily meets Ryu and Sutter and immediately hides the knife. But Ryu sees her and immediately asks her to show her the knife she is hiding because it looks like the knife one of her friends has. Lily tells Ryu that the knife is for her. But instead, Ryu uses a coin to hit the knife off Lily's hand and yells that she only knows of one knife with hieroglyphs. On seeing this, Lily immediately runs away leaving the knife behind, but suddenly jumps into Bell, who tells her that he has misplaced his knife. Just then, he sees Ryu and Sir, who hands him his knife, and tells him that they saw it with a peril. Excited, Bell suddenly holds Ryu's hands to thank her, but she tells him not to act like that to her but to sire. Before Ryu and Sire leave, Ryu whispers to Lily's ears never to try any trick on Belle again. But as the ladies leave, Belle asks Lily if she would like to follow him to the dungeon the next day. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. The following day, Lily follows Belle into the dungeon and asks for his knife, and he tells her that he has kept it with his dungeon advisor, Ina, so that he would not lose it again. After defeating more creatures in the dungeon, Belle hires Lily formally, and when they count their profit for the day, they realize that they made up to 26,000 Valius. Oh my god! Wow! Bell splits the reward into two equal part and gives Lily a part while he takes the other. Then he asks if she would like to get something to eat with him. Seeing this, she becomes shocked because he does not try to take all of the profits alone. And when she asks him why, he tells her that he would not have made such profit alone. While showing off his bet's charm, Bell stretches his hand to Lily as he tells her that they have to keep it up. At the guild, Ina sees one of the Soma Familia nagging and complaining about how little his money is, which makes her begin to wonder if Bell would be alright with his new supporter. Meanwhile, Freya the goddess of beauty, who is after Bell, tells herself that she only wanted to look at him from afar, but now she is ready to go after him. At home, Hestia drinks some grape juice with Maich, the goddess Bell met earlier and begins to tell him how Ina wants to take Bell away from her. However, Maich tells her that Bell is not her property, but she refuses, saying that Bell is cheating on her. Wait a minute! Since he met his dungeon advisor, suddenly, Hestia hits her huge cannons on the table while crying, and at the same time shining to confess how much she loves Bell. The following morning, Hestia begins to cry, making Bell wonder what is wrong with her as he gives her medicine to take. Then he asks her, if she would be free the following day so as to treat her to a nice meal. On hearing this, Hestia jumps up and tells him that she is free at the moment so they could go on a date. She also goes to her wardrobe to get clothes, but changes her mind all of a sudden and tells Belle they should meet at Amor Square in the evening by 6. Later that evening, Belle waits for Hestia at the Amor Square, but begins to get uncomfortable as he sees different couples doing different things. Soon, Hestia arrives and asks Belle if she did not keep him waiting but he tells her that he just arrived. Then, as Hestia tries to grab Belle's hand for them to go, some ladies suddenly shows up as they all gather around Belle to see the handsome demigod who captivated Hestia, which makes Hestia very angry as she grabs Belle and they both begin to run away from the goddesses. After trying to escape all day, 
Bell and Hestia hide in a place where they both sit because of how exhausted they have been. There, Bell consoles Hestia that he would still treat her to a nice meal, which makes her unhappy immediately she hears that. Meanwhile, Lily goes to pay some adventurers who maltreat her, but they kick her out telling her to go bring more money if she wants to gain her freedom from them. Later, Belle goes with Lily to the dungeon, and as Belle fights with the creatures, Lily uses her magic blade to help Belle out. When done, Belle shares his lunch with Lily, while she tells him of her plans to take the a day off the following day because of the assembly she has in her familia, which he agree with. The following morning, when Sir tries to give him his lunch as usual, he refuses it as he tells her that he is not going to the dungeon. Then, Belle sees a magic book in the restaurant and immediately borrows it from Sar who tells him that a customer had forgotten it. Wait a minute! However, Bell takes the book in home and immediately begins to read about magic so as to awaken his own magical powers. Then suddenly, he sleeps off while he begins to dream of the kind of magic power he would like to possess. Moments later, Hestia gets home and wakes Bell up. Then, when they both check his stats, Hestia becomes shocked to see that Bell has gotten a magical power called Firebolt. Realizing this, Bell becomes excited as Hestia explains how he would be able to use his powers, and also tells him to try it in the dungeon the following day. Later that night, Bell leaves the house and goes into the dungeon so as to use his magical powers. On getting there, Bell gets excited and immediately uses his powers to kill the creatures he finds. Getting to a place in the dungeon, Bell becomes tired and suddenly passes out. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. Meanwhile, Aze and another member of the Loki Familia named Reveria, who were exploring the dungeon to defeat the floor boss, suddenly sees Bell who is unconscious. Eyes recognizes him and tells Reveria that he is the boy she had saved the previous day. Seeing this, Reveria asks if she wants to help him again, which she replies to that she has not been able to speak with Bell to apologize for what Bet said about him in the restaurant. However, Reveria leaves while Az watches over Bell. But the moment Bell regains his consciousness and sees eyes, he immediately runs away while rolling like a huge boulder. On getting home, Bell begins to cry as he remembers what he had done. He realizes that he had f***ed up by running away on seeing eyes. At that moment, Hestia wakes up and sees Bell crying. She asks if he had a nightmare because of the magic book he read the previous night. To verify, she picks up the book and suddenly realizes that it is not an ordinary book but a grimoire a book that lets one use magic. Realizing this, Hestia tells Bell that the book would lose its effect once someone reads it, which makes Bell become scared as he thinks he has read what he is not supposed to. Immediately, Bell returns the book to the restaurant and apologizes for reading it content, and when he is told he should not pay for it, he tells them that he has to leave for the dungeon. Meanwhile, Anna meets Reveria and Loki in a place where they want to purchase some items. Then she immediately approaches Reveria to ask if she can ask Loki what she knows about the Soma Familia. Riveria agrees to help her by asking Loki, who tells Aina that the people of the Soma Familia do not worship a god but worship their booze. On the other hand, Bell goes to the entrance of the dungeon and when he looks for Lily, he realizes that some adventurers are trying to bully her and tries to stop them. But one of them goes to meet him to join them, so as to rob Lily of her money and equipment as adventurers. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Knowing this isn't right, Bell disagrees and chases the adventurers away. Getting to Lily, she asks him what he was discussing with the adventurer, but he tells her it is nothing and asks her what the adventurers want from her. She decides not to answer him by ignoring his question and leaves for the dungeon. On their way, Lily remembers what happened to her parents and how she has been fending for herself. She also remembers how other adventurers had stolen from her, but she has decided to gain her freedom from them by paying the people she owes and reminds herself how much she hates adventurers. Meanwhile, Ina gets invited to Loki's house, where Loki tells her all she knows about how the mean bees of the Soma Familia would do anything to get money in order to buy their original grape juice instead of the fake they sell. Then, Loki leads with eyes and Ina begins to wonder how she would talk to Hestia and Belle about Lilikira, her supporter. However, Bell talks to Hestia about Lily, and explains that he notices that some adventurers are after her. He begs Hestia to let Lily live with them, for her to be safe from the adventurers that are trying to steal from her. But Hestia asks him if he is supposed to trust her with all that she has heard from him. The following day, Lily suggests to Bell that they explore the 10th floor, but he tells her he has heard about huge monsters being on the 10th floor. 
Yet, Lily persuades him that he has the ability to defeat the monsters, which makes Belle agree and they go to the 10th floor. But on the other hand, Ina becomes worried about Belle, but also consoles herself as she is named the Inspector of the Babel Tower, until she gets distracted from her thoughts on seeing eyes, and decides to speak to her. Meanwhile, on getting to the 10th floor, Belle tells Lily not to stay close to him, because it would be dangerous for her. There, Lily gives Belle another sword, as she tells him it would be okay for him, because his original knife is too short for huge monsters. On the other hand, Az tells Ina that she saved Belle, which makes Ina thank her for helping him. Then, Az asks Ina if Belle is scared of her, because he is always running away anytime he sees her. Yep. While the two ladies talk, they suddenly overhear some adventurers talking about how Lily is supposed to take care of Belle once and for all which makes Ina begin to panic and begs Aze to help Belle. At the dungeon, Belle begins to get attacked by the huge monsters on the 10th floor, and while he fights them, he calls on Lily, only to realize she is no longer there. Concerned, Ina goes to Hestia in the Bevel Tower, and when she tells her about Lily, Hestia tells her that Belle has made up his mind to help Lily. Meanwhile, Belle continues to fight with the monsters, but soon gets overpowered as he suddenly sees Lily, who uses a tool to take his knife from him. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. Lily escapes but is suddenly stopped by an adventurer who collects everything she has except Belle's knife, which she kept in her socks. The adventurers beat her up and leave her to die as they lure some giant ants to eat her up. At that moment, Lily begins to regret her actions towards Belle, telling herself she is supposed to die because of how badly she had treated Belle, even though he has been nice to her. On the other hand, Belle gets saved by someone he does not know. Because of the mist in the 10th floor, he is unable to see that it was Az that saved him again. Having been saved, Del runs off and Az becomes sad that she is unable to apologize to him again. Then Del sees Lily and immediately saves her from the giant ants. Seeing him, Lily becomes shocked and asks why he has come to save her. Which he tells her is because she reminds him of how lonely he was before he met Hestia. Hearing this, she begins to cry and confesses how she had tricked him and stolen his money as well but he tells her it is okay. Then, Belle touches her ears and tells her that he was not sure that shape-shifting magic existed so she should lay low as everyone will think that she died in the dungeon and will not suspect her. Then, she asks him if he is comfortable with this, since as she took advantage of his kindness and betrayed him. Surprisingly, Belle smiles and tells her not to worry about it as he is not angry with her, and tells her he has forgiven her. They arrive at Belle's house and Lily immediately introduces herself to Hestia who begins to ask her if she is very capable of supporting Belle since she is his supporter. Lily assures and tells her that she will protect him with her life. Then, Hestia tells her she will believe her, but also informs her that she hates her because she has deceived Belle for so long and now she has returned to try and win her over. Immediately, Lily begins to feel bad after hearing these words from Hestia, as she begins to feel guilty of all that has been said to her. After a minute of silence, Hestia starts to beg her to take care of Belle as she would not want anything to happen to him. Also, Hestia tells her to prove herself in making up for what she has caused him. Just then, Hestia introduces herself to Lily and tells her not to come between her and Belle. On hearing this, Lily immediately takes off her robes and grabs Belle by the hand. Finding himself in this situation, Belle panics and rushes out of the building to see Ina, while he leaves the girls to argue. Belle arrives at the guild and immediately begins to look for Ina, but he notices that she is not anywhere to be found, until he suddenly hears his name, and when he turns to see who is calling him, he sees Ina with eyes and begins to run. While he tries to escape, he stumbles on someone's chest, which makes eyes immediately flies up, Eyes tells her that she only came there to return what he left at the dungeon while battling the Minotaur, and she also wants to apologize for allowing it to escape. Hearing this, Belle tells her he should be the one apologizing because he has always been avoiding her, after all she has done for him, and they both smile at each other. On the way out, Ais tells him he is putting so much effort in dungeon diving, as she is surprised how he can reach the 10th floor so fast. Hearing this, Belle tells her getting to the 10th floor is nothing as he still has a lot to learn, since he does not have anyone to teach him how to fight. At that moment, Ais decides to put it upon herself and offers to teach Belle how to fight which surprises him. The following day, Az asks Belle what he would like to do first, but to begin with, she would like to see his weapon, then proceeds to ask him if he is good in hand-to-hand -hand combat. 
While trying to explain, Bo receives a very huge kick on his face from Aze, which swings him far away. Then, Bo realizes that Aze is a blonde inside and out. Immediately, she apologizes and tells him that they need to spar. She draws out her weapon, but uses the sheath and notices that he is now actively looking at hers and begins to tell him why he always needs to be fierce in battle. While they fight, Aze tells him that he lacks special skills in battle, but Bell assures her that they should continue. During the fight, Aze notices he is trying to take advantage of a spot and decides she uses it against him. The following day, Bell and Lily go to the dungeon as usual. But on getting there, they are suddenly attacked by monsters, which Bell uses the teaching he got from Aze, as well as Lily's help to take out. To their surprise, more monsters begin to show up from the smoke. Seeing this, Lily suggests they retreat so as to regroup. But Bell tells her that if he does that, he will not catch up with Aze's skill. Then, he goes ahead to attack the monsters. Later, he returns back to his training with Aze, where they continue to fight, and she keeps knocking him out over and over again. However, he wakes up for the last time and tells her he wants to stop, while she asks where he gets his strength from. He reveals to her that there is someone he is trying to be better than, who she tells him she totally understands. Then she tells him that they should practice napping because in the dungeon, he needs to learn how to fall asleep at any time. After the training, Aze decides to take him to the city, while Belle wonder where she is taking him to. She, however, tells him that she is aware he is hungry, and she is too. Therefore, they need to get something to eat. Getting to the store, Belle sees Hestia, who having seen him, immediately jumps on him and asks what he is doing with the lady, which he begins to apologize for. Later that evening, Belle tells Hestia everything going on between the he and Aes, which makes her begin to threaten Aes not to go near him or even try to seduce him. The following day, while Belle is walking alone in the street of the city, he surprisingly sees Caesar, who tells him how much she has missed him, and manages to trick him into washing plates for her. Noticing her trick, Belle decides to help having realized it will help him take his mind off the things he has been thinking about lately, which has been bothering him. Suddenly, Ryu comes in and offers to help him, after seeing how much the work is for him to handle alone. While washing the plates, Belle asks Ryu how one can become stronger, which she decides to answer by telling him everything he ought to know about how he can become stronger. There she tells him he will need a party and some special skills if he wants to get stronger. Hearing this, Belle immediately sees that all she is saying is similar to what he has heard from Aes, and begins to ponder more about all Ryu is saying. Then, Ryu gives him an advice by telling him he is an adventurer and needs to disregard whatever is bothering him and focus on what is necessary to being an adventurer. Later at day, Belle goes back to the training, and Aes could see that he managed to counterattacks. After the training ends and Aes have left, Belle begins have the determination that he has to catch up with Aes' skill by working hard to get to that level. After, he goes back home to see Hestia to tell him that his training with Aes is over, as he begins to prepare to go for the expedition to the depth of the dungeon. At the entrance of the dungeon, they are grouped in two to hasten the exploration. Then, they are asked to head in. In the dungeon, Belle and Lily are alone, until suddenly, Belle stops having noticed that someone is watching them. He immediately tells Lily, who also confirms that something feels odd about the floor, and he tells her to follow him closely. As they continue to move, suddenly, they hear a loud noise coming towards them, and Belle sees it as a huge minotaur. At that moment, Lily becomes scared as she wonders what it is doing on the mount floor. Immediately, she advises Belle to follow her as they are not ready to fight the monster yet, but he has been carried away in his thought, until Lily calls his attention to what is happening around him. Unfortunately, the monster has gotten closer by this time and tries to attack Belle, but Lily pushes him away to save him. At that point, Belle stands up to see that Lily has been knocked out. He pushed her away and tries to use his firebolt to bring the monster down, but all to no avail. Then the monster pushes him away with its sword, which makes Belle realize that the monster is very strong for him to handle, and begins to seek for an opening for them to escape. Meanwhile, the other adventurers has learnt of the Minotaur on the 8th floor and have immediately moved out to go help Belle. Lily, on the other hand, wakes up to see that Belle is still battling the monster, but he instructs her to run away which she immediately obeys, knowing that if he attempts to run away also, the monster might kill Lily. Then he decides to continue fighting it. Eventually, the monster overpowers Belle after a series of attack, and while Belle sees that he has been injured, he suddenly sees Aes who had come to help him. At that moment, he believes he cannot allow her to save him again and immediately stands up to fight the monster on his own. 
at that moment, the other adventurers show up and begin to worry about him, seeing that he is in level 1 and may not be able to handle the monster on his own. Suddenly, to their surprise, they see that he is actually beating the monster after taking down one of its hands. Then he uses its own blade to cut it in pieces, and uses his fire bolt ability to take it out, while and the other adventurers watch in awe and wonder how he is able to do it on his own. They become surprised and watch him as he passes out while standing, then go to check his stats, and they realize that all his abilities are ranked S, which makes them wonder who he is. Then, they take him to his home, where Hesti will be able to look after him. The next morning, Mel wakes up to see Hestia by his side him, and they begin to talk about his achievements in defeating the monster, and how he has been ranked up to level 2. She also informs him about his newly gained special ability, the Argonaut ability. Hearing this, Mel becomes very excited, but when Hestia tells him the meaning to the skill he has acquired, he suddenly becomes ashamed because it's a skill for small adventurers. To encourage him, Hestia tells him it is not a bad skill, as he will have to know how it is applicable in battle. Suddenly, the goddess tells him that she is heading out, as she would like to go for the meeting of the gods, where they decide on the names they would call new adventurers that have ranked up like him. Arriving at the venue, Hestia hoped to get a very cute name for Bell. Meanwhile, Bell, who is at home, is already thinking of the cute name he will be given, and begins to fantasize about it. Soon, Hestia comes back and tells him that he is safe as she has picked a name for him, only for Bell to hear that his second name is Little Rookie. Hearing this, he does not seem happy about the name, and decides to go out for a drink. There he meets Ryu, who congratulates him on leveling up and tells him she likes the name Little Rookie. She tells him he can drink up since he is celebrating his new name. Also, Bell realizes that people are talking about him, but Ryu tells him it is a sign of his popularity and hands him his drink. They begin to celebrate as Ryu advises him against going deeper into the dungeon. Meanwhile, Lily, who is also present, asks her if she thinks they cannot handle the depths of the dungeon alone. But then, Ryu tells them that the middle part of the dungeon has different monsters and crazy levels that one cannot accomplish on his own, and it might be very difficult for him as it is not a matter of skill. Also, she tells him to get a party so as to make things easy for him. But Bell tells her that getting a party will be too difficult for him, because he does not know anyone that would want to join. Suddenly, another adventurer in the tavern asks Bell to join their own party since they are all in level 2, and he should give Ryu and Sire to them. Bell refuses their offer, and Ryu immediately gets infuriated and slams on of them on the floor with an hourglass. The adventurer then tries to grab her, but the owner of the restaurant immediately stops them and sends them out if they want to fight. The following day, Bell goes out to a shop in search of Krazo's armor. While looking for it in the shop, to his surprise, he meets with Krazo himself, who he did not expect to see there. There, Krazo makes him an offer by promising to be Bell's blacksmith and make all his armor and weapons, but in exchange, he asks to be part of Bell's party. Surprised, Bell immediately accepts him without even thinking twice. The following day, while Bell and Lily set out into the dungeon, they begin to talk about Krazo and why he does not go on expeditions with his familia. Bell tells Lily that he might be an outcast as he begins to tell her about Krazo. On hearing this, Lily immediately tells Bell that Krazo's family were famous for making weapons and armors, but all of a sudden, they lost all their powers and abilities, and now they have nothing left. Suddenly, they see some orcs monsters coming out from the ground and begin to fight them, and to Bell's surprise, he realizes that he has gotten faster than before. Meanwhile, other adventurers have also spiced up their game because they have all been motivated by Bell. At that moment, the adventurers encounter a baby dragon and flee for their lives, but Bell uses his bolt ability with his new skill to kill the dragon. Realizing this, he becomes confused by this new ability and asks Hestia about the skill when he gets home. There she tells him it is his new skill that is making him that stronger, and while she tells him about his new ability, Bell asks if she has heard about the Crozo family. Hearing the name, she tells she has and begins to tell him all he needs to know about the family by telling him how powerful they are. The following day, due to the favor granted by Bell, Krazo decides to help him tweak his armor and make necessary changes to it. Then he takes him to his workshop and tells him about all that he can do. There, he sees the horn of the monster that he defeated and suggests that it be used to make a very good weapon for fighting, which Bell accepts. And with swift reaction, Krazo begins to make the weapons for Bell and it becomes so uneasy, as it takes him all the whole night to make. Then, Krazo tells Bell to give it a name, 
and also tells him that he is aware that Bell might not trust him with everything, but he begs that he be spoken to like a friend. Hearing this, Bell accepts and promises to be a friend to him. The next morning, the adventurers prepare to go into the dungeon again, and Hestia realizes that Bell had left early in the morning to the dungeon, as the day is his big day. Bell, on the other hand, begins to fight some pack of wolves, and then he notices it is very easy, seeing that he has more hands in his party, therefore fighting monsters will be easy. Meanwhile in the marketplace, Herms and Asfi begin to talk about the adventurers, and how long it took them to level up, and begin to argue about the matter. Suddenly, Herms pats Asfi to calm her, and appreciates her for all the efforts she has put in. But she tells him to give her a break, and they both head into the tavern for some food. Meanwhile, back at the dungeon, other adventurers are fleeing from danger, because of the rabbits that are trying to attack them. Meanwhile, Bell and members of his party also find themselves surrounded by the monsters, only for Bell sees that the quality of the monsters have increased, and they have become more powerful. Suddenly, the other party that were running away from their monsters passes by Bell and his party members, letting the monsters that are coming after them to also begin to run after Bell and his party, which makes them run for their lives. But then, Bell tries to stop the wolves with his fire bolt, but unfortunately, his friends sustain an injury from the attack, but he tells Bell that he will live. Suddenly, they hear another noise coming from the cave at which they came from, and all of a sudden, they see more monsters coming out from the cave and continue to fight them. At that moment, Bell begins to show a sign of weakness, which allows the dungeon to collapse on them. Seeing that his men are injured, Bell immediately rushes to help them, only to discover that they are trapped under the rocks and there is no way to quickly rescue them. Then he sees a wolf that shoots fire from his mouth, which makes Bell realize that the middle floors are very strong. Meanwhile, when Hestia sees that Bell and his team have not returned from the dungeon, she immediately sets out to meet the people at the entrance of the dungeon to ask if they have returned but they tell her that they have not. Then, she orders them to file a quest to find Bell and his party members. Bell, on the other hand, manages to save his party members from the wolf and the fire, with the help of the wool given to him by Ina. Having escaped, they continue to walk until they realize they have arrived at a dead end. And there, Krazo tells them to leave him if anything happens as he is dead weight, but Bell tells him it will not be possible. Therefore, he should not think about something like that. Then Lily gives them a solution as a last resort, due to the fact that they need to come out alive. She tells them they will have to go down to the 18th floor so as to tag along with other adventurers that are leaving, and they can go down through the rifts. Hearing this idea, Bell accepts and tells them to go deeper into the dungeon. Meanwhile, outside the dungeon, the adventurers that left the monsters for them to conquer alone are being questioned and scolded by Hestia, who tells them that if Bell and his party do not return, she will not only hate them, but also hold a grudge against them, but begs them to help her. Immediately, they all agree to help her as they begin to plan out the search party. While they contemplate on how to go deep into the dungeon, Herms suddenly appears and tells them that he has come to help out in the search for Bell and his party members. Hearing this, Hestia agrees immediately, as she seems desperate to save Bell and his teammates at all cost. She also decides to go in herself, but they remind her that it is forbidden for the gods to go into the dungeon. But then, she tells them she can go as long as no one finds out. Also, she tells tells them she can feel that he is still alive, as the blessing she has given him is still there. In the dungeon, Bell and the others carry a very smelly bag with them, so as to prevent the monsters from coming near them. Suddenly, they see a wolf and Krazo uses his own fire magic against it, which makes it blow up itself. Meanwhile, as they plan to advance deeper into the dungeon, suddenly, they hear an earthquake, and when they look, they see another huge minotaur approaching. Angrily, Bell begins to battle it alone, tearing it to pieces, and uses the weapon obtained from that minotaur to take down the remaining three monsters, which surprises everyone, as they wonder how he is able to do it. At that moment, Bell suddenly immediately falls to the ground, and begins to breathe heavily as he is very exhausted from the battle. Krazo, on the other hand, freezes as he becomes surprised at how he was able to take down the monsters with a very low level. Later on, Bell and his teammates become very exhausted from battle, after casting spells over and over again. Meanwhile, the other gods and the adventurers begin to go deep into the dungeon, as they also battle Monster in search of Bell and his team. The other adventurers become very surprised after seeing some real power from some of the strong prayers amongst them. They continue to go deeper into the dungeon, and suddenly, they notice a collapse and begin to climb onto it, so as to know if Bell is there or not. There the gods notices they have lost most of their equipment 
and suggest they might be dead, as their chances of surviving in the dungeon is very low. Meanwhile, Asphite tells them that there is a high chance that Bell has descended into the 18th floor, which they all agree to and decides to go to the 18th floor in search of the team. Also, Asphi informs them that there are refs all over the dungeon, and that is how they will go down to the 18th floor. At this point, Hestia begins to pray that Bell is still alive. Meanwhile, out of exhaustion, Bell's teammates have passed out, leaving only him, who has also exhausted his powers from attacking the monsters. There, Bell begins to think about what he can do, and knowing that he cannot leave them alone, he decides to pick them up and begins to walk down into the dungeon. On his way, Bell sees a hole he thinks is a way out and jumps down with Lily and Krazo into the hole, only to land himself in another room. During the search, Hestia asks Herms why he is interested in Bell, and he tries to lie about it, but she tells him to say the truth. Then he tells her that someone is interested in him, and he is also interested in Bell, which explains why he has come this far to meet him and see with his own eyes if he is really the one to shoulder their era. On the other hand, Bell continues to struggle while carrying his teammates as he finds himself in the room, and wonders where he is and what the room is. Then he becomes confused on whether it is the Great Wall of Sorrow, as he begins to think if he should make the decision and go in. But then, he realizes he has no other way, and he begins to advance forward into the cave. Suddenly, the cave begins to collapse on him, which makes him try to move faster so as not be crushed by the falling rocks. All of a sudden, he sees a monster coming toward home, which makes him begins to run towards a hole nearby, and fortunately, he is able to jump into the hole before the monster gets to him. He falls down into the hole with his party members and realizes he is in a place filled with grass. With the little strength he has, he tries to look for his friends but immediately passes out. When he wakes up, he finds himself in a building and sees that the person by his side happens to be his teacher that taught him how to fight A's. He asks her what she is looking for in the dungeon, and she tells him that her family is stays there. Then, as Belle tries to get up, he mistakenly falls on her small melons. Immediately, he removes his face from her melons and asks of his friends. She shows him his friends and he sees that they are safe, which makes him thank her for saving them and taking care of them. Then she tells him that her commander has instructed that they come see him as soon as he is awake. Getting to the commander, he commends Belle for making it to the 18th floor on the first day and congratulates him. Also, he promises to look out for him as far as he is a friend of his. After they head out for a walk, where they see two girls who begin to tell Belle of how great his fight with the Minotaur was, and one of the girls flashes her melons in front of him, which surprises him. Later that day, while Belle and I head out to get something to eat and they take a walk, Belle begins to ask how the inside of the dungeon is bright, while they are inside the it. Just then, he sees a very bright light and notices it is a light in the tunnel then. Ace begins to explain about the crystals and how it all becomes night when time passes by. At night, Belle sees that it has gotten dark and also sees that his friends have woken up and wonders where they are. They begin to call out to Belle who tell them that they are okay, and they both begin to apologize to him. They apologize for weighing him down and slowing down his mission, but he tells them it is not their fault, as they did their best also in saving their lives, as those hellhounds would have roasted them all if they did not help. At that moment, Aes comes to tell them that dinner is ready, surprising them, as they wonder what she is doing in the dungeon. However, they head out for dinner, and on their way, they are recognized by other adventurers for their sacrifice and bravery. At that table, they begin to eat and joke around, after Belle realizes that the food is delicious. Later, the two girls from earlier comes to ask Belle about how he got all his skills to S-level, and in the process, they make him feel nervous again, but Aes gives him a very tough facial expression that makes him keep quiet. Then he hears a noise and look what it is, only for him to look sees that it is Hestia coming down to the floor he is in. Meanwhile, immediately she seems him. She rushed to him and began to cry, thinking she has lost him. Seeing this, Belle apologizes for getting worried, and tells her that it will not happen again. Then he sees other members of the search party, who comes to apologize to him for causing him to be in the mess he found himself in. Having apologized, Lily and Crozo suppose that if Belle is okay with it, then they are willing to let the issue go, seeing that their lives were at stake too. Then, Herms insists that they come up with a plan after what has happened. But they realize that some other adventurers are fighting Goliath, so that they can head back to the surface. Asphi, however, tells them that they have a day to relax by telling them to go and rest. That night, while everyone is asleep, 
Belle is unable to sleep and decides to stare at the crystal. Then, he sees Aze and asks her what she is doing up this late, which she replies, stating that she saw him awake and wanted to make sure he is okay. Hearing this, he asks her when she is going, and she tells him it is after they have left. Then, she asks if he would like to see the town, telling him there is a town in the dungeon. Learning this, Belle becomes surprised as he cannot wait to see the town, and begins to wonder what it will be like. Suddenly, Hestia comes in and thinks Aze is trying to hit on Belle, which makes her argue with them. However, Hestia becomes tired and asks Belle if where they are going is not far, but he replies that they will soon get to their destination, as he helps her to walk. Hestia adds as she gets angry that she does not understand how their private date turned into a group hangout. Suddenly, Belle places Hestia on his back and at that moment, Lily calls him to come and look at the beautiful crystals. Belle admires the crystals and asks Hestia if she also thinks the world is beautiful, which she replies that the world is indeed beautiful. Oh my God! Wow! While they stare at the crystals, Herms looks at Hestia's beautiful rice cakes and he immediately smiles at them. Soon, the group enters a small village called Riberon, created by adventurers. There, they all see a sign that says they can trade in the village. But when they all check the prices of the goods in the village, they realize that the items are very expensive. The Amazon girls also tells Belle that lodging in the town is as well expensive, which explains the reason they have been camping in the forest. Suddenly, Belle remembers that he has not seen Hestia, and when he asks, Ace tells him that she is at the perfume shop. Meanwhile, another adventurer named Mord get angry on seeing Belle as he tells the rest of his crew that he would teach Belle a lesson. But the other adventurers immediately tell him that Aze is around, therefore, he should not try to do anything stupid. Suddenly, Hestia runs to meet Belle and shows him the new perfume she just got, which he commend of smelling nice. Then Lily scolds Hestia that she is not being reasonable because she bought the perfume at an expensive rate. Yep. Few minutes later, all the ladies decide that they want to go and have their bath in the lake. But Hermes goes to meet Belle that he wants to have a word with him later. Meanwhile, Bait suddenly sees Belle and begins to get angry as he asks himself why Belle is also with them. However, Belle walks with Ryu, who tells him to pay tribute to the dead members of her familia. She tells him the story of how her familia was attacked and killed, and how she had to avenge the deaths of her only family before she was taken care of by Mamma Mia. Hearing this, Belle consoles her, and before she leaves, he tells her not to look down on herself as it is not good for her. Calmed by his words, Ryu holds Belle's hands and tells him he is a good human. Later that night, while Mord and the other adventurers are drinking some grape juice, Mord tells the rest of the adventurers how he wants to teach Belle a lesson because he has always been full of himself. The following morning, Beat attacks Belle and tries to beat him up for peeping at eyes while she was taking her bath. But the Amazon girls carry him away, while he yells at them to let him go. There, Belle sees eyes who tells him she is already leaving as she is part of the party that is to leave first. Unknown to Belle, Hestia was watching while he had the conversation with Az, which gets her angry. But all of a sudden, she gets grabbed and taken away from her room. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. Later, Belle enters Hestia's room and gets shocked after seeing a letter from Mord that he should come alone to the Lone Crystal if he wants to see her again. Immediately, Belle runs to the crystal and when he gets there, he sees Mord and the other adventurers, and Mord tells him they should have a duel, which if he wins, he would be able to save his goddess, but if he does not win, he must do anything he says and Belle agrees. As the duel begins, Mord immediately uses a magical power to become invincible, Wait a minute. which confuses Belle as Mord begins to beat him up. Meanwhile, Hermes watches this from afar, until all of a sudden, Belle's party arrives, and they begin to fight with the other adventurers. Suddenly, Belle begins to feel Mord's aura, and he is able to block and attack him. Eventually, Belle wins the duel, while Lily goes to release Hestia. On getting to where the duel takes place, Hestia immediately releases her powers, which shocks all the adventurers. Hestia stops her powers and immediately goes to meet Belle to ask him if he is okay. Suddenly, they all begin to hear a huge earthquake and begins to wonder what is going on. As the adventurers watch a huge man-like monster, whom they recognize as the floor boss, suddenly emerge. Seeing this, Bell tells his teammates that they would have to save the others, which makes Ryu ask him if he wants to fight with his whole team, and he tells her they would all fight together. He puts Chigusa in charge of Hestia, 
while he and the other members of his party fight with the four boss. Bell and his party members begin to fight with the four boss, but Andromeda goes to meet Morris and tells him that they all need to defeat the floor boss if they want to get out of the dungeon. Because of this, Morris immediately instructs the men to gather all the weapons they can get as they will all attack and defeat the floor boss. Meanwhile, Ryu and some members of Bell's party, who are attaching the floor boss, are only able to bring it down on one knee. As Ryu sees that the floor boss is more powerful than they can imagine, she immediately tells the adventurers to withdraw. Andromeda and Ryu communicate telepathically and tell each other that they would have to keep the floor boss busy so that the rest of the adventurers would be able to focus their powers on it. To get this done, they all focus their attention on the floor boss and they are able to hit it. But to their surprise, they see that the floor boss monster can regenerate itself. Suddenly, the floor boss begins to launch attacks at the adventurers and at that moment also calls out one other small lobsters as well. Seeing this, Ryu immediately tells Bell to ask the other adventurers to kill the smaller monsters while they try to weaken the floor boss. Meanwhile, Oka watches as the other members of the party fight with the floor boss and immediately tells Chigusa to give him a shield, because he cannot sit while his teammates are risking their lives. Immediately, Bell goes to the floor boss and he uses his magical power to hit the monster, but he gets it by the monster too. Then suddenly, when the monster tries to attack Bell again, Oka uses his shield to block the attack from the floor boss. In the process, Oka and Bell suddenly fall down, and they both become unconscious. There, Hestia tells Ryu that Bell would stand up and defeat the floor boss, but unknown to them, Bell is able to hear them as he tells himself he cannot open his eyes or move his body. Knowing what's going on, Herms goes to where Bell is and begins to say what Bell's grandfather had once told him. Immediately, Bell wakes up as he tells himself that he has to fight for his goddess, his comrades and eyes. Meanwhile, Ryu and Andromeda begins to cast a huge spell as they all focus their magic to make the floor boss weak, in order for Bell to attack it. To get the job done, Bell takes a sword and channels all of his powers into the sword, then proceeds to hit the floor boss. Seeing this, everyone becomes shocked that Bell's attack has a huge impact on the floor boss as they could now see half of the monster's gem. Suddenly, Bell uses his sword to hit the gem which makes him able to defeat the floor boss totally, without it regenerating itself. Also, Oka wakes up and all of the adventurers begin to leap for joy as Bell has saved them from the floor boss. Then, Mort tells himself that Bell is not like what he thought after all. Happily, Herms begins to yell that Bell is the last hero given to them by the gods, and he is able to witness it. Then, he also adds that the wheels of history are turning, as their children would be able to tell the tale of the white-haired hero.